Okay, here's another uh, something right off William Shatner's 911 episode. What was that? Back in the 80s, 90s. So again, I'm up in uh, Washington County, Oregon, with my uh, partner Don. I believe it must have been 1997, 98, somewhere around there. I was there from 96 to 98, so it was somewhere between there. <clears throat> We were doing the night shift again, 7 p. to 7 a.m. We're hanging out somewhere, I, I don't recall off the top of my head, and um, our uh, radio starts to light up with Unit 12, your location, and we respond, and then uh, they say, respond to uh, such and such address, uh, reported uh, animal bite. And so, animal bites, well, those of you in EM, what do I got here, do I got something else? Hold on. Yep, I got a fish. Hold on. So animal bites, uh, those of you that are uh, that are not in the business are probably uh, trying to figure out, you know, what kind of animal is it? Well, that's what we do too. We always try to provision what's ahead of us. Well, typically, more than often, it was a perpetrator, uh, a bad guy, and the police released one of their canines on them and the, uh, the German Shepherd tore up their, their leg, their arm, whatever. So that's, you know, we're, we're already um, assuming that's, that's more than likely what it is. So uh, we respond, uh, fire's already on scene. It was in a uh, private house. Firefighter already out at the doorway and a bunch of firefighters, including the captain inside the house. And as we walk in, I witness like three firefighters are up against the back wall of the living room. I mean, their backs are up against the wall. One guy in particular looks like he's that deer in the headlight look. And he looks right at me and he looks at me and he looks over at another location and he looks back at me and he looks back at the location. Of course, my head follows his eyes and I look over in the direction of where he's looking there's a, a guy sitting on the couch and he's got his he's got his hand up in the air he's got his other hand grasping it and wrapped around this guy's arm from his elbowish on up in this big ball i mean big ball is a snake <laughs> he's got a boa constrictor this thing is fat. I'm telling you, the diameter of this snake must have been as large, if not larger, than my thigh. It was huge. And the head of this thing turns out to be monstrous. As you follow the snake's body, the body of the snake continues onto the carpet and into the kitchen. I go walking into the kitchen and this snake's body is behind the refrigerator. The refrigerator has been pushed away from the wall and it continues off the uh, tile floor onto the carpet and onto the couch. It must have been, I'd say, eight to ten feet that I can see. I said, are you okay? He's like, uh, sort of. I said, what in the world? Your snake? He goes, yeah, it's my. And so what happened? He says, well, I was got home from work and I typically go in and I feed him. I, I feed him a rat. Yeah, I think he kept him in the back room. Well, he was already out of the room and in the kitchen, apparently. And so he decided to feed him right there. However, he presented this thing to the snake the snake beat him to the punch, per se, and not only grabbed the rat, but including his hand. 
and he wasn't fast enough to pull it away and next thing you know the snake wrapped himself around his arm so he was able to call 911 and uh, so that's what we find I'm looking at the firefighters and the guy one guy that was looking at me initially is like shaking his head unbelievable and I look at my partner Don and next thing you know he gets behind the snake's head and he's holding him by his neck and this thing's hissing and making all kinds of guttural sounds the guy's hand the tips of his hand his fingernails are already cyanotic his fingers from his hand up are, are turning cyanotic um, that's that's really the only thing that is emergent his airway is fine he's breathing fine he's got a pulse he's obviously got a blood pressure his skin color is good except for his hand I turn to the cap or the cap starts talking he's like I've got the curator on the phone from the local zoo and this guy has given him instructions on the best approach to get this snake um, to release its grip on this guy and so he's on the phone and he's like yeah and he's he's listening and of course we're all turned in and watching cap and waiting for him to give us the next step the cap finally comes back and says okay guys here's what we got to do we got to find something rigid he said the guy said like a credit card and everyone starts reaching in their pockets including me and I'm and I'm opening my wallet and I'm pulling out my visa or MasterCard and all the firefighters are doing the same thing we must have had four or five plastic cards everyone holds up their plastic card and he gets back on the phone he's like asking him to repeat what he said he says okay he says the front of the snake's mouth you need to take that card and quickly and forcefully push the edge of that credit card into the upper gum line of this snake's mouth he says he won't like it and he'll release his mouth or hopefully he'll release his grip and then you can go from there he says get as many guys as you have get a hold of the snake one at the neck one you know three feet down from that and so on down towards the tail so we had I don't know, four, uh, myself and three firefighters, I think, including Don, all in a chain down this snake's body into the kitchen. And so we're all ready. We got this snake untangled. We got him straightened out. I wasn't the uh, fortunate one to, to uh, swipe the credit card. Um, one of the firefighters gets up to him. He's like trying to, you know, and he gets lined up and he's like, okay, guys, I'm going to go for it. Captain's still got the guy on the phone. He's got him on hold. And this guy just gets it as close as he can. The snake's hissing and, and moving and squirming. And we're trying to maintain this boa constrictor. And he does the credit swipe. And he jams it in there real quick and pulls it back. And that snake does exactly what the curator said it would do. He lets out a noise and he opens his mouth and the guy pulls his hand away and he kind of scoots away. The owner of the snake, he goes back in the back bedroom and he gets a big burlap sack or pillowcase, whatever it was. And he's like, here, put him in here, put him in here. So we sat there and we fed this uh, snake tail first and he helped put this snake down into this bag. Uh, snake secure, patient sits down on the couch with us. We're taking a look at his hand. It doesn't look good. Um, it's still purple and said well uh, I'd have somebody take a look at it if I were you and he's like well I don't have the money and I have no insurance uh, we said well tell you what we're gonna advise you to go that you need to be seen and that you're refusing and then we'll have you sign a piece of paper uh, what we call an AMA against medical advice and then he signs it and uh, we ended up leaving the scene and hoping that he's gonna you know follow advice and, and get to the ER we did uh, sometime after uh, did a follow-up made a phone call to the hospital that um, he more than likely would have went to and we asked him by any chance did a guy come in had a cyanotic hand from a blow constrictor that was wrapped around his his arm and they kind of chuckled and said uh, nope can't say we saw one of those so apparently he didn't go in you know it must have gotten better on its own well it didn't end there we ended up uh, having a christmas party that year in december Don and I, my partner, um, were sitting at the same table. I think it was a guy uh, came up to the uh, microphone and he said, um, we have a little something special to present this year. 
Before we uh, present the award, we have a, uh, a movie that we put together uh, that we would like you all to enjoy. There's a big snake in the plane, Jock! Oh, that's just my pet snake, Reggie! I hate snakes, Jock! I hate them! And at that point, Don and I looked at each other and smiled and we realized they're doing a special on us on our call and then the lights came back on the uh, presenter looked over at us and uh, started telling everybody about the crazy call that we had um, encountered with this boa constrictor they had plaques uh, made out for us with the uh, uh, I think it was 1997 crazy paramedic call of the year And that was our, uh, our recognition for that uh, once in a lifetime call. Guys, again, it's always a pleasure telling you this, as you were.